Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Rath, and today's story is How to Build a Hug, Temple Grandin and Her Amazing Squeeze Machine. This book is a picture book biography. Temple Grandin is a real person, and it's her story. Written by Amy Giglielmo and Jacqueline Torville, and illustrated by Giselle Portier. Here are the tools on the end pages, since this book is about building something. Here is the title page. I wonder why she needs to build a hug. Let's find out. Temple loved folding paper kites, making obstacle courses for her dog, and building lean-tos with real hinged doors. Temple did not like scratchy socks, whistling tea kettles, bright lights, or smelly perfumes. See her under the table there? And Temple really didn't like hugs. When other kids looked sad, lonely, or scared, Temple could see that hugs cheered them up. If people were grateful or really happy, they passed out hugs like cookies. And holding your arms out wide usually meant you wanted a great big hug. Temple wanted to be held too, but to her, hugs felt like being stuffed inside the scratchiest sock in the world if anyone tried to give her a hug, she kicked and screamed and pulled away. At school, Temple wasn't like other kids. No one understood that when the classroom fan word, Temple imagined a dentist's drill, that to her the voices in the loud, stinky cafeteria roared like a jet engine, and the school bell clanged like a woodpecker knocking on her head. To escape the noisy images, Temple fled to the playground swings. Where she spun and hummed until the sounds vanished in the breeze. The wound up swing felt snug and secure. Is this what hugs are supposed to feel like? Temple wanted a real hug. But even when she was safe at home, when her mom leaned down to give her a squeeze, all she saw was a tidal wave of dentist drills, sandpaper, and awful cologne coming at her all at once. Wow, that must be tough to have those feelings that are so opposite, wanting a hug, but not liking it. Sometimes, when Temple was having a really bad day, she crawled under the sofa cushions and asked her little sister to hop on top. The smush of the heavy pillows felt cozy. Maybe that's how hugs worked. Year after year, Temple filed away images of every hug she came across. The firefighter coming to the rescue with a ladder and a hug when her neighbor's cat got stuck in a tree, the teary-eyed couple at the train station embracing as the whistle blew, her little sister wrapping her arms around their mom just because. And once when Temple was in her front yard building a maze for her pet mouse, she heard a baby wailing like a fire engine and looked up to see a mom swaddling her fussy child in a blanket. As the mom swayed back and forth, the cranky baby instantly hushed. How do hugs do that? When she got older, Temple attended a special boarding school that gave kids like her a chance to grow. Temple made friends excelled in art and sciences, won ribbons for her excellent horseback riding, and kept building things like model rockets, a lift for the school's 
ski slope and a tiny swinging door for the resident cat to go where it pleased. Around her, Temple saw families hug goodbye in September and hug hello in June. Temple missed her mom too, but she just couldn't express her feelings in the same way. Would she ever get a hug? At the end of the school year, Temple was invited to spend the summer at her aunt's ranch in Arizona. Temple kept busy drawing and painting, reading books about inventors and fixing things around the farm. She even made a machine that opened and closed the ranch's heavy front gate. In the yard, Temple trotted the horses and fed the baby goats, letting them push up against her hands as they nuzzled for bottles of milk. She watched newborn calves take their first wobbly steps and noticed how they flinched when tickled by flies, just like she did when people tried to touch her. On the day of the calves first checkup, Temple heard frantic mooing and raced outside to see what the matter was. A ranch hand was leading a skittish young cow into a mysterious device. Her aunt explained that the squeeze chute helped cows stay calm during vet exams. Temple watched as the man pressed a lever, releasing the sides that cradled the animal in a snug embrace or hug. Almost immediately, the nervous calf stopped its lowing and stood perfectly still. And suddenly, Temple had an idea. So she ran to the barn and quickly sketched a plan. She took measurements and sawed planks. She found a spool of wire, a rusty pulley, a length of string, and some cushions from an old chair. Would they do what she wanted? Let's see what she's going to build. Temple called for her aunt to come see. Then she crept inside her creation and pulled the string to let the sides slip around her. Temple smiled. The loud noises disappeared. The air smelled fresh and the bright sunshine felt wonderful. It's a snuggle apparatus, said her aunt. It's a squeeze-a-majiggy, said her uncle. It's a squish box, said the ranch hand. It's a hug machine, thought Temple. Temple brought her invention back home at the end of the summer. Every time she felt nervous or scared, she slid inside for a cuddle. But after a while, she began to use the machine less and less, and then almost not at all. Then one day, her machine broke, and she knew that only one thing could help her cheer up. And that was, what do you think? I'm guessing a hug. I'm into hugging people now, said Temple Grandin. And at the back, there is a little biography. And Temple Grandin says, I used my mind to solve problems and invent things. And there's a picture of the real Temple Grandin. And there's the end of the book. I hope you liked that story, How to Build a Hug. I bet you it's inspired you to think about other things that you could make. Enjoy.